Welcome to the State of the City Address with Elgin Mayor David Captain. We're thrilled that you could be with us today virtually because of COVID, but we're glad nonetheless to be able to bring you this exciting opportunity to hear more about the, from the mayor about what's happening in Elgin. This is an annual address that the mayor makes to our Elgin area chamber business community. And our thanks go to Jackie Cater and AT&T for sponsoring today's event. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you very much, Carol Gieske. We appreciate that. Now, this is the first time the State of the City Address with Mayor David Captain will be uh, addressed virtually, if you will. Traditionally, Mayor, as you know, you gather out at ECC and talk to business leaders, and with that, we enjoy that very much. But luckily, we found a way to bring you into City Hall and get a chance to talk about the city and review, the, state, uh, the it's entire great. review. And, uh, Jeff, I've been doing the uh, breakfast for a number of years now. This is different, but it's a different year. We always miss those great events. Let's look at 2020. Quite a year it was. Tell me, uh, Elgin, how they fared this year. Well, Jeff, you know, it was a very, uh, obviously, uh, COVID and uh, uh, the uh, uh, shooting of George, uh, the issue with George Floyd created some issues for virtually every community in the country. And Elgin was no different. Uh, COVID affected us. Uh, the social unrest affected us. But I think the city of Elgin was in a better shape to handle those two issues than any city in the area. Reasoning being that uh, we had years ago set aside money and, and uh, we have a, a reserve fund. We also uh, have diversified revenues to help pay our bills. So the COVID has uh, obviously caused us a setback there, but we were prepared for that. And with the social unrest you mentioned, we, we held that pretty well. Absolutely, and that goes back, uh, and we prepare for everything. That goes back almost five years. And we started to have community conversations uh, with uh, pastors, with the black community. And I remember the first one we had was right after the Martin Luther King um, event in January. We sat down, we had about 50 people, and uh, discussed social issues, discussed bias, discussed racism. And that expanded into uh, uh, group meetings where we had up to 150 and 200 people to talk about uh, uh, policing and traffic issues. So we've had those discussions for a number of years, and I think that prepared us for the, so. uh, uh, and, and it really cushioned uh, the social unrest in Elgin. You almost talked about that as far as the city was concerned. City operations, we got through the year rather well. As you were pointing out there, you are always prepared, always talking with folks. Correct. And that's our part of our uh, part of our, our belief here is, is doing that and being transparent and, and exposing ourselves to uh, the criticism and having the discussions. Let's talk about the, I'm sure that everybody in the city is delighted with the, the flat property tax levy for operations and, and uh, that's always good to hear that, isn't it? Absolutely. And that, again, that goes back to the uh, diversified revenues. We did that. Uh, uh, that's one of the things I ran for, first ran for mayor on was that uh, property taxes were too high and we depended on that to fund the general fund and we diversified revenues to spread it out so they became more of a use tax. The more gasoline you use, the more tax you're going to pay and the property taxes were allowed then to remain, the, the, the levies were allowed to remain flat. And your various departments of the city did so well in conjunction with what you were talking about. They, they were to adapt, didn't they? Absolutely. And we did, we had some issues, of course, and we did things this last past year that were uh, um, I, not pleasant for everybody. Yeah. We got, we had some events that uh, uh, we had to cancel. Uh, we had uh, some uh, furloughs that were made. We've had the uh, city staff has stepped up and some of our unions, as particularly the SEIU Public Works, SEIU Clerical, and the, uh, the non-union portion of the, the city managers have stepped up and we're not uh, offering pay raises. They're not gonna have pay raises next year. So there have been some setbacks for us and we sure. we dealt with it and we were prepared to do Done that. that well. Capital projects, uh, what are some of the major projects residents will benefit from? Uh, certainly one of us is, uh, one of them is uh, between City Hall and the Hemmons, and that's the plaza back there. Yes. And it was uh, put in uh, almost 60 years ago. The concrete had failed and uh, that had to be replaced. We had patched it and patched it and uh, that had to be replaced. Uh, a fairly expensive project because a lot of the uh, utilities run underneath that. Oh and, yeah, and, and, and roads. And <laughs> we plan to have it done early next year. The landscaping didn't get done this year, but we're planning to get that done early next year. Of course, one of the big issues for the city uh, and the big projects for the city that took a couple of years was the East Chicago Street. Mm -hmm. uh, complete resurfacing, complete redo, uh, redo of the uh, sewer and water mains, and we ended up uh, uh, having issues there with the uh, lead service line, so sure. it uh, was a long-term project. Uh, the other one is, is obviously street resurfacings and uh, projects that have been ongoing for a long time. Street resurfacing and uh, uh, waste, uh, the uh, storm sewers and combined sewer work on Bluff City Boulevard 
or a couple of projects they've been I'm going for a long time. The street projects are never ending. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, thanks, Mayor, for all those thoughts. What about the, the Metro Bridge the, the, across the Fox River? That one we owe a lot of we owe a lot of thanks to uh, Senator Duckworth. She helped get funding from the federal government to do that. It was almost an eighty million dollar project. The bridge was built in the eighteen eighties, and uh, well, they obviously they knew how to build things back then because it lasted a long time. But it was only made for one track, so this allowed them to put in two tracks, put in a new bridge, and uh, it should uh, serve this community and and. Uh, uh, future communities to the west of us as well for many, many years to come. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the Elgin Police Department. They always have new concept, new projects, do they not? They do, and uh, uh, they've been working very hard and uh, uh, doing some things that uh, uh, they have a, uh, it's called the uh, Community, oh, I got my notes here. Community Advisory Board mm -hmm. has been established by Chief Lally, and they have, uh, I believe about 70 people have been involved. They came from the uh, beats of uh, the police officers, and uh, so they get some feedback from those people that live in neighborhoods of issues to them. It goes back to the police department. That was something new for them. Uh, they're working very hard on uh, uh, some other issues there, and one of the things I think that uh, um, working hard on bias and police bias, I want to touch on that for just a minute. Sure. Because bias goes two ways, and I think that there's bias from the uh, amongst the police department, and they admit that they're working to try to resolve that, but there's also bias from residents towards policing and towards police officers and poor police departments. Not all police officers are the same, not all police departments are the same, and Elgin has one of the finest police departments in the country, and they deserve the respect that they've earned for that. And people come from all over the country to look at it, to talk to our police officers, to talk to our, our chief, to learn how to do proper policing. And I think that's something that we need to, uh, to really discuss. That's wonderful. So the individual police officers have, have changed with yeah. society and and, and one And one other thing I think is important to talk about, and it's uh, talking about police transparency. They're really working hard to do some things with that. Uh, they're going up to update the, uh, their website. And I want to say this. I think that Elgin has uh, changed a lot in the last decade. When I ran for mayor the first time, it was part of it was on transparency mm -hmm. and for a community. Elgin was not very transparent at that time. But just to put some perspective on it for people, Elgin was reviewed by the Illinois Policy Institute. That's a libertarian organization and looks at government. And one of the things that they, that they looked at was the transparency of a community. And Elgin uh, was one of the top uh, communities in the state. I want to I want to really hone in on that. They looked at the 25 largest communities. There are only three that were more transparent than the city of Elgin. They had a rating of 100. That was Evanston, uh, Orland Park, and Skokie. And Elgin was fourth. Elgin is the is the largest city with the highest rating in the state of Illinois. So we should be very proud of that. Our transparency rating was 99 percent. Wow. So we're one of the top transparent cities in the country, in the state. That's wonderful. And crime has been down for years, and 2020 was more of the same. Absolutely, and it's uh, the the crime rate uh, for the cities at a, a f almost a 50-year low, and we're seeing uh, uh, the reduction for uh, I believe uh, I've got some cards here. I believe the uh, uh, violent crime was down. Part one crime was down six percent. Overall, it was down 15 percent uh, in just the last year. So we're still working at things, but. All of these things are a work in progress, Jeff, and we keep working on our transparency, we keep working on our crime rate uh, to make things better. Can we talk about the fire department? We, we can. We have a wonderful new chief. and that's Exactly. And, um, uh, unfortunate for him, I guess, but fortunate for us, uh, he, he became sworn in as chief just at the time the COVID. That's right. Uh, it's the last event almost before exactly. we could go out it anymore. Exactly. It was just uh, yeah. the timing in was March. unbelievable. And he got thrown right into the, uh, into the breach of the COVID fight, but he took a leadership role and uh, he helped organize health, uh, the health uh, uh, departments in the city of Elgin. He helped organize the, the uh, uh, discussion on COVID, what we're going to do, how do we move forward with the King County Health Department. And uh, now other communities have followed his lead and uh, following what we're doing with COVID. So uh, Chief Sagan stepped up, really did a great job. and. Uh, uh, very, very, very typical of our fire department. Did a great job in handling the yeah, crisis he's situation. A, he's a nice man, no question about that. Good staff, good squad. Yeah. Yeah, he has terrific people. Long running. 
We're, we're having conversational uh, State of the City Address with Mayor David Captain. Your conversation's always great, Mayor. There's no question about that. Talk about public services and, and, and the water department. Sure. And uh, we, uh, we look at public works and, and the services. They, they do three things that we really have to fo that we really focus on. One is the water, of course, the water supply, and they are responsible for maintaining uh, uh, the water supply in the city of Elgin, repairing our leaks. Uh, they also, public works also takes care of our leaf pickup and the uh, uh, snow removal. And everybody takes, like, like anything else, they take that for granted. You take the water for granted, and you, uh, you turn the tap on, you expect it to come out. <laughs> if it doesn't come out, you got a problem. Same thing with snow removal and the leaf removal. They have done an outstanding job uh, the, last, uh, uh, the last year. And the complaints have been at a really a low for us. Uh, the, uh, the, the kudos for them have, have been uh, really uh, uh, at a high, I think. And I think it's uh, exemplified. They made some changes in how they do things, and they constantly think, and being progressive and being proactive in solving problems as well. No question about that. Recently, the 2021 budget was passed, also the three-year financial plan. We probably should talk about that a little bit. Yes, uh, we just passed that uh, uh, in December. By law, we have to have a balanced budget. And uh, uh, Deb Naraki and our, uh, our finance department does a great job keeping track of things. And, and again, we've maintained our AAA bond rating, which is extremely important to a community. Uh, We've had uh, a balanced budget here for, uh, for uh, uh, every year, and we're uh, trying to hold the costs down, and obviously we spend the time doing that as well. It's not just about raising money and doing things to, uh, to move the city forward. We have to be able to fund things. And people think, well, I have a great idea. All those great ideas cost money. <laughs> and we have to figure out a way to pay for them. And Deb Naraki in our finance department has done an outstanding job. Uh, Rick Kozal's, under Rick Kozal's leadership and his look at the finances, he, uh, we've done very well. That leads us right into economic development. It's been a tough year for everyone, but uh, how would we, how is Elgin been doing along those lines? This, this we, uh, year? And, I, and I'd like to say we did better than hold our own. Mm -hmm. And uh, even with the COVID and the problems that have been going on around the country, we've seen the growth in our community. We're still one of the leaders in housing starts. We have uh, a couple projects that are looking at moving into Elgin. I think that's a, a significant part for our community. Uh, we've had, um, we're looking at occupancy rates and I've got some numbers here for that as well. I can't remember the numbers as well as I used to anymore. But <laughs> we've, uh, um, we're doing well, aren't we? We are, we're doing really well. And the, uh, uh, we've seen some growth, we've had, uh, uh, our, our retail occupancy rates at about 96 percent, and uh, we start. We've seen a little dip in industrial uh, occupancy, but one of the reasons is uh, we added over two million square feet of spec building. Now, a spec building is a, a developer comes in; they don't have a tenant yet, but they had enough confidence and growth in the city of Elgin to build a two, uh, over two million square feet, the largest expansion in our history wow. this last year. And uh, those buildings are speculative. They're going to look for tenants to fill them, but they were confident that that was going to happen. So there was a little dip because of that, but we're not concerned because we feel that's going to be filled up. Wonderful. So you talked vacancy rates and that led into that project you talked about. So yeah. it's fair to say we're still a, a growing community. Absolutely. And uh, we're st uh, I think we're going to see continued growth, and uh, uh, those are some of the challenges that we're going to be facing. Let's talk. Again, we're addressing uh, the city, State of the City Address. Mayor David uh, Captain with us. Let's talk about unemployment. How was yep. that? Oh, 2020 meant what to the And general? again, that was a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started out and we were at almost a, a, a 20 year low for uh, unemployment in the city, down around 3 or 4%. And that has uh, 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 gone up because of the COVID and, and uh, uh, particularly restaurants closing down and, and those types of things increased it. But it started to come back and it's been uh, going up and down and I think we're kind of stabilizing now. But we mm -hmm. were in pretty good, we were competitive with the communities around us and uh, I think it's going to stabilize for us now at uh, uh, hopefully the, with the uh, vaccine and next year when the, uh, we put the COVID behind us that we'll start seeing uh, again some growth in uh, uh, employment in our community. Because we do have a strong restaurant base even in this rugged year uh, folks were still yeah. battling weren't they absolutely yes and uh, we had uh, and again we had some uh, uh, some restaurants closed some opened yeah and moved into elgin i had a couple that were uh getting ready to come and visited me to talk about opening a, a restaurant and that uh, 
uh, got slowed down. So some sure. of the things got put on the back burner. Bad thing to say about a restaurant. <laughs> put on the back burner. If you will. But, if you will, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that they're gone away, that they're just holding back. They still try, it looks like okay. St. Belgian's attractive with the restaurants. They keep, keep battling like that. We exactly, like that. yeah. You're so good at looking at the future. Let's take that crystal ball and look to 2021 and beyond. Okay, uh, a couple of the things that are going to be facing us for sure. Uh, uh, we're going to have to deal with the new world after COVID. And we've learned some things. Uh, uh, we learned to be Zoomers. Yeah. We've learned what social distancing is. Uh, we've learned about uh, how, uh, how do we hire people and have them work in a more safe work environment. How is that going to stick? And how much of that is going to be remaining for us? We're going to have to adapt a little bit and look at, uh, uh, I think there's going to be a move to the suburbs. And I think that we're seeing that. I've met with uh, business leaders around the community. I do that with the chamber and uh, with, Car uh, with Carol Gieske's uh, uh, guidance and help. We meet with business leaders to talk about what they see. And that kind of guides me. Uh, um, have some, uh, they've had uh, changes that they've looked at. Uh, one business leader told me that the COVID virus moved his timeline up by five years. Hmm. He was planning to start getting people working from home more. And uh, he had an office in Chicago and one in Elgin. And he said that that instantly happened with COVID. He sent the people in Chicago home. He still works out of the Elgin office. And I think that may be something that we're going to see more and more of in the future. That is something that's going to be, uh, I think it's going to remain with us. And I think that uh, I've uh, uh, had Zoom meetings that saves a lot of time for me, saves a lot of time for businesses. And I think we've learned to do that. You know, fourth graders are learning to do sure. that. The other thing we're going to deal with is how to deal with education. How is that, how is that going to change? How do we catch up? They feel some of the young people have fallen behind. And how do we get them back up to speed as, a, as part of their, their learning process? So a number of challenges for us. And I think uh, the, the future is still bright here. And uh, I think that uh, uh, one of the things I think that we, ought to, we have to do is we have to continue to look forward. I don't want to look back anymore. Sure. 2020 was not our best year, and I always like to look at Satchel Page and yeah. his comment, don't look back because something might be gaining on you. And if it's going to gain on you, it better be something good. You better so, keep moving forward. Yeah. What, well, you mentioned that with, with all of what you talked about, right, the business outlook, but uh, other parts of the community uh, moving forward as well. You've kind of touched on it a little bit, but yeah. it looks good, doesn't it? It does. And I think our future, Elgin's future is bright. And... Uh, uh, Businesses and, and, the, and the people that move here look for a stable government, they look for a safe community, they look for a progressive community that continues to move forward, and Elgin offers all of those things. One last thing I think that we need to talk about is people had to change the way we looked at recreation, never thought about that. Yeah. We don't have baseball, we don't have basketball anymore, so what do people do to entertain themselves? We're seeing more and more people in our city going outside and enjoying things outside. We've changed the way that we've looked at our special events, and I think that's something we'll look forward to again uh, in 2021. You are flexible with that? I like that. Yeah. Now, as we, as we wind down, tell, tell the folks your remarks on how, how, how Elgin businesses and, and residents, what we would have to look forward to a little bit. I think that we, uh, uh, one of the things that we have to do is get through this virus, and I think that we have to pull together. Uh, we've tried to support the restaurants with uh, um, uh, doing takeout, things like that. I think we have to continue to do that. This is not going to go away uh, in the first half of the year. So let's try to get through that first half. Let's go out and get our shots and get our vaccinations. Yeah. That's important for everybody. Make sure we get that. Let's do our part as individuals to make Elgin move forward. As one, as an individual, that's an important part of what we do. Well said, Mayor. You, you love Zoom. Did you like this virtual city of the State of the City address today? I did, and I think this is something, you know, we can look at doing this in the future, and maybe it uh, maybe it's the best way to do things. We'll have to talk to the chamber, you know. They, <laughs> love, we do, they love to, uh, they, I, like doing the, I like doing the breakfast. I love the breakfast at yeah. Elgin Community College, but this has been a different year for us for a number of reasons. You're great with conversation in any vehicle, so we love that. We're hearing the beeping. That means you're out of time, young man. Happy to thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and enjoyed it very much. Thanks for being with us.